When I tell you how excited I was to do this list, ugh, I just don't think you understand. Like Greek mythology was my favorite subject in school as a part of like history. It was just so much fun. It's so weird. They're just a bunch of weirdos up there and, I, and I'm here for it, if I'm being honest. Welcome back to The Hive everyone. I'm your host Rachel Fisher and get ready to count down with me in our list of top 10 Greek mythology stories that will leave you confused because honestly, what the heck were they thinking? Number 10, Pasiphae and the bull. The gods, man, they love to throw some bestiality as punishment at their will and pleasure. Um, Equus probably would have been their favorite Broadway show. <laughs> Everyone knows the story of the Minotaur, but do you know how it all got started? Well, let me enlighten you. King Minos begged the god Poseidon to send him a glorious white bull that he could sacrifice. The god obliged. He sent him the most beautiful, stunning creature from out of the sea, because the apparently bulls come out of the sea. Anyways, but when King Minos went to sacrifice the creature, he found he could not bring himself to kill such a noble beast, so he just killed another bull instead. Outraged by his disobedience, Poseidon punished him by making his wife Pasiphae fall into uncontrollable lust with the bull. She convinced an Athenian inventor to create a hollow wooden bull for her to hide in, kind of like a Trojan horse, that could facilitate a union. Yeah. Like a, a union, you get what I mean by that, yeah. She then later gave birth to the one, the only, the Minotaur, which would later plague King Minos and all that fun stuff. You know, like the whole labyrinth thing, yeah. That story, weird, don't understand it, but here it is. Number nine, Arachne. You'd think if someone was really good at something, they should be rewarded. But no, oh no, that's not how the ancient gods worked. Their egos were very fragile. Sorry, okay, chill out. Anyways, Arachne was a girl who was an incredibly talented seamstress, which made her a little bit cocky. One day she was so proud of her work that she proclaimed that she was a better weaver than Athena. Athena was the goddess of wisdom and war, so not a good person to mess with. Athena warned her not to make such claims, but she ignored her, so the two faced off. The two had a weaving contest in which Arachne ended up winning in front of all of the onlookers, but Athena didn't accept defeat gracefully and instead of rewarding her, punished Arachne to feel immense overwhelming guilt, causing her to take her own life. But that wasn't enough for Athena. The goddess brought her back as a giant spider who would forever weave her designs in the forms of webs. Not very nice, not very nice indeed. Number eight, Erysichthon. Are rich people rich because they're greedy or greedy because they're rich? Either way, Erysichthon was, bottom line, a very greedy man with wealth that spilled over. Kind of like the Sun King, really. Planning to build another feast hall for himself because he needed another one, he demanded that a massive grove of trees be cut down to make room. This grove, however, was sacred to Demeter, the goddess of Earth. But the men did as he asked, save for one tree. One tree was left standing, covered in beautiful wreaths, symbolizing every prayer she'd ever granted. When the men wouldn't do it, Erysichthon tried to do it himself. While doing so, he killed the dryad who lived in the tree, which really didn't bode well with the goddess. To suit his greed, she set down Lemos, the divine representation of starvation. Overwhelmed by a formidable hunger, the more he ate, the more he desired. He sold off his entire fortune, including his own daughter, to buy more and more food, but nothing would slake his hunger. Finally, he began eating himself, bit by bit, until he finally perished in his own greed, destitute and alone. So, moral of the story is don't cut down trees. Or don't be greedy and don't cut down trees. Number seven, Leda and the Swan. Like, Zeus. Head of the gods, the one we all should be looking up to was like questionably immoral. But like, I mean, when you're a god, you can kind of do what you want. This story hurts my head because I just, like how does A get to B? Anyways, Leda was the daughter of the king of Pleuron in Atolia and wife to Tyndarus. One day she wandered by the river Eurotas and Zeus fell hard for this bathing beauty, but he just couldn't show up in his true form because one, Hera, his wife and sister, was watching, and two, she probably would explode if she saw his true form. So he went to Aphrodite to ask what to do, and she transformed him into an immaculate swan. By either seduction or nefarious action, there's two sides to the story. Some say he, her, and others say that she was into it, I don't know. Leda became pregnant either way and gave birth to two eggs. 
Eggs! Inside the eggs were two sets of twins. One, the infamous Helen of Troy and Polydeficus, and the other two were born from Leda's husband, Clytemnestra and Castor. One pair was immortal and the other immortal, which is also still confusing because like, didn't Helen of Troy die? I don't know. There is also another version which is pretty much the same tale except it was the goddess Nemesis, not Leda, and, and Zeus turned into a beaver and it was just really weird. So again, confusing. No idea what's going on. Number six, Kronos. I like how the Greek gods are as like chaotic to how the world is in Greek mythology. It kind of makes a weird sort of sense, you know? This weird godly family was messed up from the very beginning and if you don't know the original story of Cronus then, well, here you go. Before the gods of Olympus, before Zeus and Hera, there were the elder gods Gaia and Uranus and then their son Cronus who married Rhea. Kronos overthrew his father and when he heard that one of his children was going to do the same thing, he decided to eat them. All of them. Just gobbled them down like an aspirin. Rhea wasn't a huge fan of the whole thing and eventually enough was enough. So when Kronos went to swallow Zeus, Rhea tricked him and gave him a rock instead. She stole Zeus and hid him away until the day he would be strong enough to return and overtake his father. Disguised as a cupbearer, he gave his father a purgative which made him puke up all of his siblings. Together they stormed against their father and overthrew him after 10 years in battle. Whew, that's a rough, that's a rough start to family life. Of, and then Zeus married his sister and there was a whole bunch of ins and it's just, you know what I mean, you, you've heard that. Number five, the story of Mira. What is she pointing at? Ever been so sad and disheartened that you just, you just wish you could turn into a tree? Yeah, me too. And then people could just leave me alone. However, the only person to ever successfully transform into a tree was Mira, who turned into the Mer tree. But the story behind it is kind of uh, messed up. Mira loved her father a little too much, like way too much. She was in love with her father and desperately wanted to be with him. She knew it was wrong and tried everything to resist the gnawing desire inside of her, even trying to take her own life. Her nurse found her and fearing ever parting with her, decided to work up a scheme to hitch the two together. On the celebration of Bacchus, the queen hitched town, so the bed was empty. You see where this is going. Disguised as a maid, the nurse brought Mira to his bedchamber for 12 straight nights. On the final night, the king, overwhelmed with curiosity, removed the mask she was wearing. When he discovered that his lover had been his daughter, he reached for his sword and tried to kill her. Makes sense. Mira fled her father and ran across the desert for nine months and surprise, she was pregnant. Ugh. When she couldn't run anymore, she begged the gods to hide her from the world. They took pity on her and turned her into the myrrh tree, which one day would be hit by a running boar, revealing the child Adonis tucked into the bark. Adonis was also supposed to be super hot and awesome, which totally doesn't play by the rules of like incest. Like usually something goes wrong there. Remember Joffrey? Like that didn't go well. Number four, Ixion. This one is confusing because it prompts a question I've never wanted to ask. How do you even make love to a cloud? When Ixion, the king of Lapiths and the son of Ares, married Dia, the daughter of Dionysus, he promised him a gift. However, when Ixion reneged on the promise, Dionysus stole some of his horses. Enraged, Ixion invited him to dinner to make amends, but instead pushed him into a fiery pit of coals. I mean, he is the son of Ares, like what you expect. He was banished for such a crime because it was completely uncool, but after a few years, wandering sad and alone, Zeus took pity on him and invited him up to Olympus. That's a good idea, where Ixion got the hots for Hera. Zeus decided to see if he would actually even try it, like would he even try it? And so he sent him a cloud shaped like Hera. Ixion did try it and he made love with the cloud and even stranger, it got pregnant. <laughs> Their union gave birth to the first centaurs who were literally and figuratively horny little half horse, half human people that roamed the world. <laughs> As further punishment, Ixion was thrown from Olympus, struck by Zeus's lightning bolt and bound by Hermes to a fiery spinning wheel. <laughs> Some people just really don't deserve your pity, man. They just don't. Number three, Alcyon and Ceyx. This one kind of hurts my heart, I mean, honest. The love story between these two is just something everyone longs for. They were admired by humans and the gods, and yet they were still punished for it. What? Alcyon was the daughter of the god of wind and devoted wife to King Ceyx of Trachis. They were so in love with each other, they often playfully called each other Zeus and Hera. Despite many of the gods admiring them, and this was clearly an endearment, Zeus wasn't pleased. 
How dare they compare themselves to the gods? So he waited until Ceyx planned to visit the oracle, against his wife's wishes, who was concerned the wind he faced would be too harsh on the sea. Even her father had difficulty controlling it. But he did, and Zeus stirred a storm that sunk the ship. With his last breath, Ceyx prayed his body would be brought back to his wife. Hera took pity on the mournful widow and sent a messenger and the body back to her. After burying her husband, she flung herself into the sea to be reunited with him. The gods were horrified by Zeus's actions because they loved the two of them, so he tried to atone for his rash action by transforming them into kingfisher birds. Yeah, Zeus, turning them into birds, it really fixes everything, don't? You're fine. Number two, Pan. What a weirdo. Pan is literally the weirdest horn dog god who ever graced the planet Earth. Firstly, the way this dude came to be makes no sense. There are many versions, but one of them involves Odysseus's lonely wife getting jiggy with 108 suitors. Pan, like, stamina, right? Pan had the hind legs and horn of a goat and was the god of shepherds, flocks, hunters, forests, pastoral music, and fertility. The last one being the most prominent. Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye would have been this guy's anthem. He pursued everything and everyone, nymphs being his favorite. They would be so desperate to get away from him, they'd have to turn into trees, Mira, reeds. Echo was even killed by his minions when she denied him. He could also multiply himself, creating like a swarm of pan. He also, he's also the only god who ever died, but no one is quite sure how that happened. So again, another confusing thing about him. Number one, last but not least, Thiestes and Atreus. This next one will have your brain scrambled by the end. Thiestes and Atreus were brothers constantly at odds. While their father, the king of Mykonai, was away at war, they seized the city and Atreus became king. He sacrificed a lamb with a golden fleece to seal the deal with Artemis and gave the fleece to his wife who was fooling around with his brother Thiestes, and she gave the fleece to him. Thiestes made his brother swear that whoever had the fleece would be king, and thinking that his wife kept it safe, he agreed. Thiestes then showed the fleece. Astrius, pissed off, asked the gods for help. Hermes told him to tell Thiestes to promise that he would be made king again if the sun went backwards in the sky. Thiestes agreed, thinking it was impossible, so, Zeus made it happen. Then Atreus fed Thiestes his own sons for dinner unknowingly and banished him as punishment. I know. Then an oracle told Thiestes that in order to exact revenge, his own daughter had to have his son. Like, so he made that happen in the grossest way possible. And then, it sounds like I'm talking about like some dramatic like housewife show. And then the son grew up, killed Atreus, and Thiestes became king. But wait, Atreus' sons, Agamemnon and Menelau, came back, overthrew him, and Agamemnon finally became king, ending the whole cycle. <sighs> We're good. All right, I'm tired after that one. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, follow, subscribe, comment. Tell me other weird things that you think are even weirder. And until next time, my little sweet bumblebees, stay sweet, honey.